guys so it's time for my long overdue rest of 2016 wrap up my last wrap up was filmed in july and uploaded in august and i've read a lot more books since then so i'm just gonna try and quickly go through them with a rating and maybe a couple sentences about them so here we go after finishing library of souls i finished modern romance by aziz anzari which I read on ebook and I really enjoyed it. I rated it five stars and I just found the whole thing incredibly relatable and funny and interesting. And next I did end up reading Drums of Autumn, the fourth book in the Outlander series. And of course I loved it because I just am really enjoying that series. I borrowed it from my mom and will probably read the next one pretty soon. And of course I rated it five stars. Next I read Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which I rated 4 stars, but 3 stars might be more accurate. I liked it and parts of it were funny, but there was a lot that was just very different and I don't really consider it canon. And it's not really like actually written by just JK Rowling, it's more like her story idea and these two other guys actually wrote it so it doesn't really count. I do have a physical copy, but I'm currently lending it to my brother. And then I read Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. This is his kind of second book in this series. I don't know if it's a series because all of the stories are different, um, but they've got these kind of spines and they are half picture, half text, and I just absolutely love them. They're a guaranteed five-star rating from me. Next, I read The Night Bookmobile by Audrey Niffenegger. She wrote The Time Traveler's Wife, and this one is actually kind of a graphic novel. It's set up more like a picture book, but it's really good. It's really interesting and kind of morbid, actually, and I ended up rating it four stars. Then I read an actual picture book called You Belong Here by M. H. Clark, and I came across this at the library and it was just so beautiful I had to pick it up and read it right then and there. And the illustrations are gorgeous and it's just kind of a picture book about where you belong and it's just amazing. Then I read Tales of Angria by Charlotte Bronte. And this is some of her very earliest writing in her fictional land of Angria that she had with either her sister Anne or her brother. I think her brother, actually. But interestingly, I read this through an interlibrary loan, which is when your library system does not have a copy of a book, but they find another library system somewhere in the country that does have a copy, and they borrow it from that library for you, and you have like two weeks to read it. So I did, and it was interesting. I'm glad that I read it, but it definitely was not her most well-known kind of writing. And then the three short ebooks in the Harry Potter series came out where J.K. Rowling wrote about places and people in the Harry Potter universe, just kind of non-fiction style things. So I read those three pretty quickly, and they were pretty entertaining. Next, I read Lovesick by Jessie Cave. Jessie played Lavender Brown in the latter part of the Harry Potter movies, and she is actually a really cool person. She has a YouTube channel called Pindipi, and this is her book of daily doodles, and they're all kind of focused around love and relationships, and they're so funny and relatable, and you should follow her on Instagram or Twitter to see more. Next, I read Monstrous Volume 1 by Marjorie M. Liu. This is an absolutely gorgeous graphic novel, and the story is kind of fantasy, and it has a lot of really badass women in the forefront of the story, and the illustrations are just incredibly breathtaking, and I absolutely loved it. I read it through NetGalley, but I would love to have a physical copy just to have. Next, I read Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. I probably read this as a kid, but I have Wild Things by Dave Eggers, which is based on the movie that he wrote the screenplay for, which is of course based on the book. So I wanted to read the original before watching the movie, before watching, before reading. Dave Eggers' novel. <laughs> I rated it four stars, and yeah, I really liked it. It's a classic. 
After that, I read The Space Between Us by Thridi Umrigar. And I read this on ebook. I ended up giving it four stars, and it basically just tells the story of two different women living their lives. One is a little bit more high class, one is more low class, but things are a lot more complex than that. And there's a lot of flashbacks, and the writing is really good, and it's a great book to pick if you are trying to read more diversely. Then I read Fight Club 2, which is a graphic novel by Chuck Palahniuk, and I was really enjoying it, but then it just got meta and absurd and not that great in the end. And I rated it three stars, just kind of middle of the road for me. After that, I read two more Maurice Sendak books, Outside, Over There, and In the Night Kitchen, and I enjoyed both of them, although I'm getting more of a sense of Maurice Sendak's personal style of story composing, and it's more surreal than I'm used to, but definitely enjoyable and welcome. Then I read King Baby by Kate Beaton, who is a really great comic artist, and you should follow her on Twitter if not just for her illustrations of family get-togethers. They are hilarious. Next, I read Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendare Blake, and I rated this four stars, which is a really, really good four stars, almost five stars. I really enjoyed it far more than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be a light, fluffy, insta-love thing between a boy and a girl ghost, but it, it wasn't, and it was so good and terrifying. Then I read The Star of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara, which is kind of a collection of short stories, but they all link together and tell one overarching story. And sometimes the writing took a bit to get into, but overall I enjoyed it and rated it four stars. Then I read A Spy in the House by Y.S. Lee, which I really enjoyed and I do want to continue on with the series. I rated it five stars. And it's the kind of five stars where I don't really remember why it was five stars rather than four stars, so I'm thinking just the experience of reading it was really good. Then I read American Gods by Neil Gaiman, and it was my first time reading it. It was not the author's preferred text, and after reading into it, maybe that's a good thing because the preferred text is longer and goes a little slower, and it was already a pretty long book and some parts were a little slower, but overall an enjoyable experience, and I rated it four stars. Then I read probably one of my least favorite books of 2016, and that's Nadia by Andre Breton. And it is quoted as being one of the first surrealist romances or something like that. And it's one of those books that has been on my to-read list forever. So I found it at the library and read it and did not enjoy it. I kind of more skimmed through it than actually read it. But I gave it two stars, and I don't really recommend it unless you like really dense reads. Ugh. After that, I read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets in this absolutely gorgeous, fully illustrated edition by Jim K. I think this is my favorite way to read this series. I know a lot of people like the audiobooks best, but I'm not really an audiobook person, I'm a visual person, and this is like the ultimate visual edition of Harry Potter. Then I read Night Film by Marisha Pessel, and I really loved it. I rated it five stars. It was just so enthralling and creepy and intriguing, and is one of those books that kept me up late at night because I didn't want to put it down, and just really thoroughly enjoyable experience. Even though I know some people hated it, but that's fine. I loved it, and I'm a bit bummed out that the interactive bits aren't working or aren't online anymore, but I've heard from the author on Twitter that she is working on it, working on putting them on her website, so hopefully at some point I can enjoy that aspect of it too because that was kind of a big part of the draw to it. 
The next book I read was An Untamed State by Roxane Gay. This is probably one of the best books that I have read in 2016 and it is it was a very heavy reading experience and the book like destroyed me and then healed me through the story <laughs> and it, it was such an empathic reading experience that it was it was hard to continue at some points but it was so worth it and it's just so well done I really recommend it after that I read The Uncommoners by Jennifer Bell and I heard of this book because an artist I came across on Tumblr did the cover for it and then I came across this book which is actually an advanced reader's copy at work so I immediately picked it up and was like oh my gosh I have to read it and I pretty much did read it right away and really enjoyed it it's just kind of a cute quirky children's book a lot of people think it's very similar to Harry Potter but I did not really see that the main character looks like a Hermione but she's pretty different and I recommend it I rated it four stars after that I read Where Am I Now by Mara Wilson which was really really good it was funny and moving and I think it even made me cry a little bit and I just felt so connected to her and just related to so many things in her life even though I obviously have a different life from her. She is of course the actress who played Matilda in the movie which was one of my favorite movies growing up and I really look forward to reading anything else that she writes in the future. After that I read The Girl on the Train which I saw at the library and just kind of gave in and was like okay I need to read this already let's do it. So I kind of went into it with low expectations just in case and I actually ended up liking it. I rated it four stars and it was just really interesting and fun kind of to get into the characters heads and see who was the craziest of them all and I don't really plan on reading the movie because one of my co-workers said it's awful <laughs> so I don't really see the need for that. Next I finished a book that I had been reading kind of throughout the year and that is what to expect when you're expecting. I was not expecting, I am not expecting, and I'm not expecting to be expecting anytime soon. But my sister-in-law had a baby in November so throughout the year I read through this book to find out more about what was going on. And it kind of has a lot more about the symptoms that the mother goes through than what is happening inside with the baby and I was kind of hoping for something more scientific about the baby but I did learn a lot more than I already knew. After that I read A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett which I can never pronounce and it was my first time reading this one. The movie was one of my absolute favorites when I was growing up and I ended up absolutely loving the book even though it does turn out a little bit different in the end. I definitely want a more beautiful edition like I have of The Secret Garden, um, but this one is officially one of my favorite books, more specifically favorite children's books of all time. Then I read Saga Volume 4 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples and of course I really enjoyed it. I've been enjoying this series so far though it's taken me a while to get through it and I know there's a lot more after this volume but I really enjoy the art style and the story. Then I read the graphic novel version of Coraline which I found through my library's digital resources and I really enjoyed it though I don't know that the illustration style fits my vision of the story but of course I have already read Coraline and I thought it did a pretty good job of having everything in there and I ended up rating it four stars. After that I finished Yes Please by Amy Poehler. I had been listening to this on audiobook for a while and I also checked out a physical version from the library so that I could see all the pictures and extra bits like that. I ended up giving it five stars. It was very inspiring and entertaining. The next book I finished was Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham who of course plays Lorelai Gilmore in Gilmore Girls and I really enjoyed it right off the bat. It was very funny. It sounded 
very much like Lorelai, so I think a lot of Lorelai comes from Lauren Graham's personality. And I gave it four stars. I would have given it five stars, except for the part where she uses an alternate ego to talk about how she thinks we should not use our phones so much. And, you know, we need to stop and smell the flowers more often, which is just something I've heard a lot of people say who are more out of touch with the internet and technology and don't really quite realize how amazing it is and how integral it is to the way a lot of the world works these days. And of course it's not necessary to live a good life, but I just don't really appreciate being told to stop. <laughs> I know... I, uh, I've seen Wally. -E. Like, I know how it goes, but it's not like that. Uh, whatever. The next book I read was Leaf by Daishu Ma, and it is a wordless graphic novel that is really beautifully illustrated, and it was the cover that captured my attention and made me pick it up at the library. Though the actual plot was maybe just a little bit over my head, and I could have spent more time analyzing the pictures and trying to figure out exactly what was happening, but it has kind of an environmental message with it, and I rated it four stars. The next book I read was a really good one for 2016, and that is The Snow Child by Eowyn Ivy. I read this in the winter with lots of snow on the ground, and it was a magical experience, and I just absolutely loved it. And the last book I finished, except for all the cookbooks, was Inez of My Soul by Isabel Allende. This is one that I had been reading on ebook, and I really enjoyed it. I didn't really know what to expect, but it was just kind of an epic, beautiful story, and sometimes it would get a little bit boring, but then it would just pick back up immediately and be amazing again. I definitely want to read more of her books. So I read 76 books in 2016 altogether, and 12 of them were cookbooks, so I definitely reached, you know, more than 60 regular books. But cooking is something I'm trying to get more into now that I have more time and I'm just one part-time job now. And it's been a mixed bag, but I found a couple books that I would like to buy because these are I all checked out from the library, and a lot of recipes that I want to try. And I think libraries are a really good resource for cookbooks because you can just kind of flip through, take a picture of a recipe that you want to keep, and then bring the book back. Just don't actually cook the recipe with the book like on the counter because then you can get the book dirty <laughs> and the library might charge you for it, which did not happen to me because I'm good with my books, but just... A tip for you. So I'll do kind of a more overview wrap up of the year in general in a future video, but those are all the books that I have been reading. If you want to know any more about my thoughts, just let me know or hit me up on Goodreads and see what I said about the books on there, if anything, because sometimes I don't, but whatever. I'm really excited for 2017 and all of the books that I will get to read, and yeah, it was overall a pretty good year. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.